Valery Tsepkalo, a Belarusian opposition leader, claimed that self-proclaimed President Alexander Lukashenko was taken to a hospital in Moscow in critical condition after a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. According to Tsepkalo, Lukashenko's condition was deemed critical by doctors, and he required urgent medical attention. The measures taken to save him were aimed at dispelling speculation of Kremlin involvement in his possible poisoning. Tsepkalo also mentioned attempts to hide Lukashenko's real condition by explaining his stay at the administrative directorate of the President of the Russian Federation as a medical examination. The opposition leader highlighted previous instances of concealing Lukashenko's health issues and warned of possible relapses. Lukashenko had recently participated in the Eurasian Economic Forum in Moscow, where he mentioned the transportation of Russian nuclear weapons to Belarus under bilateral agreements. Tens of thousands of Israelis gathered in Tel Aviv for the 21st week of protests against the government's plans to overhaul the legal system. The demonstrations came after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition passed a new two-year budget, which sparked concerns among protesters that he prioritizes his religious allies over addressing broader economic issues. Protesters argue that the proposed changes would weaken the Supreme Court and undermine Israeli democracy, while supporters of the judicial overhaul believe it is necessary to balance the court's power. Despite the government's delay of the reforms in March, protesters vow to continue until the plans are abandoned, emphasizing the importance of democracy. Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, experienced the largest drone attack since the start of Russia's war. The attack occurred on the eve of Kiev Day, the city's anniversary celebration. Russian-made Shahid drones were used in the attack, with over 40 drones shot down by air defense systems. Tragically, one person was killed, and a fire broke out in a building due to falling debris. Similar drone attacks were reported across Ukraine, with a record-breaking number of drones launched and mostly intercepted. The timing of the attacks was seen as intentional, and Ukrainian officials attribute them to Russia's insecurity and animosity towards Ukraine. In response, Ukrainian air defenses have been successful in countering Russian air attacks. The drone attacks highlight the ongoing conflict between the two countries, with both sides engaging in long-range shelling and missile attacks. The Russian ambassador to the UK warned of further escalation in Ukraine, emphasizing Russia's military capabilities. Additionally, the death toll from a recent missile attack in the city of Dnipro rose to four, with several people injured. The South Korean government has stated that it will not encourage its memory chip companies, such as Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix, to seize market share in China that has been lost by Micron technology due to Beijing's national security restrictions. South Korea is cautious about taking advantage of the Micron situation as it considers the United States a key long-term partner for its semiconductor industry. The US has imposed export controls on chip-making equipment and knowledge, along with Japan and the Netherlands, as part of the ongoing trade and technology dispute with China. South Korea's economic engagement with both the US and China is delicate, as the country relies on licenses granted by the US for its semiconductor firm's operations in China. If South Korean companies fill the gap left by Micron, there is a risk of retaliation from China, similar to what happened when South Korea deployed a US anti-missile defense system. The situation remains uncertain, and it is unclear how China will further restrict US chipmakers and how the US will respond to China's ban on Micron. Both sides have recently sought to ease tensions and engage in high-level talks. Micron derives a significant portion of its revenue from China, and the impact of the ban is still being evaluated. The U.S. Commerce Secretary has condemned China's action as economic coercion, while the Chinese Commerce Ministry has stated that they will strengthen cooperation on semiconductor supply chains with South Korea. The challenge of reaching a U.S. debt limit deal is compounded by political divisions and procedural hurdles that must be overcome to pass the legislation before a June 5 deadline. The deal, reached by President Joe Biden and Speaker Kevin McCarthy, includes provisions disliked by both parties. The leaders must now convince enough members of their respective parties that the agreement is preferable to the global economic consequences of default. Time is limited, as revisions or a failure on the House floor could result in a market downturn. Republican and Democratic leaders need to manage their caucuses and mobilize support. However, not everyone will be happy with the agreement, as it falls short of spending cuts and raises concerns among progressives. House Freedom Caucus members and some Democrats have voiced opposition. The process is further complicated by former President Donald Trump's influence and the expanded work requirements for social programs. 
The timeline is tight, with the House expected to vote on Wednesday and potential delays in the Senate. The situation requires swift action to avoid a default. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney stated that good relations with China can be maintained even without participating in the Belt and Road Initiative BRI. Italy is currently the only major Western country that has joined the BRI, a project aimed at connecting China with Asia, Europe and other regions through infrastructure investments. However, Italy's government is considering leaving the project, which was criticized by Washington and Brussels. Maloney emphasized that Italy's decision is complex and involves various interests. The BRI agreement will expire in March 2024 but can be automatically renewed unless either side gives a three-month notice of withdrawal. Maloney previously expressed disapproval of the 2019 decision to join the BRI. She highlighted that Italy, despite being the only G7 country to have signed the memorandum, is not the European or Western nation with the strongest economic and trade ties to China. This suggests that good relations with China can be maintained without participating in the BRI. Last year, a senior Italian government official indicated that Italy is unlikely to renew the Belt and Road deal. The Italian government's stance on China will face a test as it evaluates a shareholder pact involving Chinese investor Sinochem at Pirelli, a tire maker. China is a significant market for many G7 countries, particularly export-oriented economies like Japan and Germany. During a recent summit, G7 leaders pledged to de-risk without decoupling from China, indicating a cautious approach to handling relations with Beijing. India's major opposition parties boycotted the inauguration of a new parliament building by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, demonstrating rare unity against his Hindu nationalist ruling party. Modi inaugurated the new building in New Delhi, offering prayers as Hindu priests chanted hymns. Opposition parties criticized the event, claiming that President Tripathi Murmu, the head of state, was sidelined. Despite the boycott, Modi entered parliament to applause from his party lawmakers and delivered a 40-minute speech highlighting India's parliamentary democracy and its departure from colonial rule. At least 19 opposition parties skipped the event, considering it an insult to India's democracy. The new parliament building is part of a $2.8 billion revamp project called the Central Vista, which has faced criticism for its environmental impact, cost and threat to cultural heritage. Modi's government defends the overhaul, citing the distress and overutilization of the old building. The new triangular-shaped building has 1,272 seats across two chambers. The controversy over the new legislative building follows previous disputes, including the renaming of a colonial-era avenue and the disqualification of opposition leader Rahul Gandhi from parliament.